Hey, welcome back to the channel. A number of my subscribers have requested a bit more information on the Smith & Wesson Model 25 that I recently featured. Since this is essentially a follow-up or part two, I'll leave a link below to part one for those of you interested. Hopefully die-hard Smith & Wesson gurus won't be too hard on me if I happen to skip some point of information they deem critical. Honestly, when it comes to Smith & Wesson revolvers, there are just too many subtle variances to mention them all. Essentially, the Model 25 was a modernized, updated version of their World War I era model of 1917, which in turn was eventually rebooted as the Model 1950. Eventually, someone came up with the 45 Auto Rim, which is essentially a 45 ACP case with just enough rim on the cartridge case to negate the use of those pesky moon clips. As a matter of fact, the first Model 25 I ever fired was a 25-2 and 45 ACP using 45 auto rim cartridges. What I recall most about it was how accurate and soft shooting it was. That said, let's get back on topic. Standard features included a wide target trigger and hammer, a high partridge style front sight and checkered target grips with gold Smith & Wesson medallion inlays. The finish was a gorgeous deep rich blue. These revolvers were originally offered in 4 inch and 6.5 and inch pen barrel versions. It's a very accurate revolver in either caliber, which proved to be very popular with competition shooters. In 1957, Smith & Wesson began assigning model numbers to the revolvers. For example, the Chief Special became the Model 36, the Model 1950 rebranded as the Model 22, and the 45 target model officially became the Model 25, and so forth. To celebrate the company's 125th anniversary in 1977, Smith & Wesson issued a limited run of commemorative Model 25s, which essentially is a spruced up 25-3 chambered in 45 Colt. All of the roll marks were gold filled including the anniversary seal on the side plate. The grips were smooth target style with sculptured medallions. By the way, if you own one of these, be aware that they're highly collectible and well out of my price range. Moving forward, generational improvements on the Model 25 series typically alternated between 45 ACP and 45 Colt versions. The front sight went from a partridge style to a ramp version with a red insert. Additional barrel length options also became available at that time. On Model 25s, even dash numbers indicated it was chambered for 45 ACP. Odd dash numbers indicated it was chambered for 45 Colt. For instance, the Model 25-6 was chambered in 45 ACP, while the 25-5 was chambered for 45 Colt. The dash numbers also indicate the approximate date of manufacture. For example, a dash 2 is an older version or made earlier than a dash 3. And it goes on like that. If you're not sure where to find these numbers on your Smith & Wesson, swing out the cylinder and you'll find this information stamped on the inside of the crane. In 1979, Smith & Wesson replaced the 6.5 inch models with the shorter 6 inch variant while retaining the 4 inch models. And also introduced the longer 8 and 3 8 inch variant that we have here on the table. By 1991, Smith dropped the Model 25 from their regular catalog, leaving it as a special order only proposition. But in 1999, they halted even that. When Smith & Wesson eventually introduced their classic line, they decided to include the Model 25. It comes with a retro partridge style front sight, micro adjustable rear sight, and a six and a half inch barrel. And yes, the new Model 25 has the safety lock or Hillary hole we all love to hate. This particular Model 25-5 was minted around 1980 and is in excellent condition. Micro adjustable rear sight with wide outline, ramp front sight with high visibility insert. It came with a wide target hammer, wide target trigger, pinned hammer, and the finish is outstanding. Pleased to have it in my collection? Well, that goes without saying. Anyway, that's really all I had planned to say about the Model 25 today. 
Hopefully I was able to toss out a tidbit or two of information about this revolver that some of you found useful. There is one other thing I might be able to offer here, and it's just a piece of advice. If you find yourself becoming a little too polymerized, simply pick up and fondle a Smith & Wesson revolver for a while. I guarantee you'll start feeling better right away. Until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.